Tenim el ple de fer-ho amb Dalibor Martínez. We've got the pleasure to do it with Dalibor Martínez. He's one of the reference artists of Serbia, Croatia, and I guess I can say Yugoslavia as well in relation to conceptual artistic practices and especially video art. He was graduated in the Fine Arts Academy of Zagreb. He was also associated to the student center, these centers that students self-manage in relation to artistic practices. He also held one of these important exhibitions which set the evolution towards uh, conceptual uh, practice and he's organized several video exhibitions, performance programs and he's participated in many international uh, biennales uh, such as Sao Paulo, Sky, Ljubljana or the Castle Document of course. So, are you ready to start? Mm -hmm. I think so, yes. yes. So, thanks a lot <laughs> for joining with us. And have a good time together. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I titled uh, this presentation just sort of for me, Me as Artist in Post-Socialist Era. <laughs> to remember what, what am I supposed to talk about. Uh, um, I will s uh, start with uh, showing you a few works that uh, I did, I call them early works. Uh, uh, these are the works that I did in the mid-70s, uh, and I will show you just to give you some idea of uh, the ideas that uh, bothered me, and uh, I guess uh, other artists too. Uh, and uh, the first interest that shaped my, my uh, later career uh, that went in two, in two parts. One, one was um, uh, the, the video. Uh, my first contact with video was uh, early 70s, but uh, the contact was just uh, seeing the portable video equipment. And then in the 74, I, I learned that there is some similar equipment in one of the elementary schools in Zagreb. It was probably some very uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, example, uh, exemplary school. Uh, so I went there, I couldn't uh, do anything, uh, I couldn't take the equipment outside because they were very, very nervous about it. So I decided to do something that I could do in this particular school class where the, where the equipment was. I placed some uh, kind of uh, Natir Mort uh, academic stuff on the, the television set. And then I um, shot the TV news of that particular day. Uh, I'm showing you this because this was my first video work and I will later come back to this uh, the, through uh, the process uh, that I later called uh, data recovery, which is uh, a, a long series of works that I did that uh, are dealing with the idea of memory and uh, lost memory and bringing back the, the <coughs> such memory. So um, the other, the other uh, 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 interest of mine was the, uh, the relationship of the artist uh, and the art with the institution. I was thinking about how the institution um, influences the, the artwork, how the perception of the artwork changes when it enters into the institution. And I, I did a number of uh, works that, uh, in which I tried to question this, uh, this um, relationship. One uh, is called Art Guard. I did this in the Gallery of Contemporary Art, which uh, later became a Museum of Contemporary Art. <clears throat> I took the role of the Art Guard, and I was guarding the important, important uh, art pieces of one exhibition. Um, 
placing literally the, the context in front of the artwork. So I was actually blocking the view uh, for the viewers of the, of the uh, exhibited artworks. This is uh, Julia Kniffer famous uh, um, series of works uh, called Meanders. And then I would do I would do other other uh, uh, artworks, uh, always always being in fr where I shouldn't be actually. But this was my you know my pro way of problematizing the, the role of the of the museum and what happens to the artwork when it enters the museum. And this is the way I later show the works, uh, you know, in the, in the exhibition of the original work of, the, of these artists. Vazarelli was mentioned uh, already, and I was guarding uh, Vazarelli, you could see there, uh, on that exhibition, so there will be a, a way to show it later on. The, the other, the other uh, work in, in, in this uh, in the line of the, uh, this interest, uh, it was uh, called Artist on Strike. I did it in uh, 1977. <clears throat> I was asked to do, to, you know, uh, contribute to work for a uh, group exhibition. And instead of um, uh, doing that, or parallel to doing that, I, I um, asked them to organize a one-day strike. Uh, the strike of artists uh, is not something that was usual in, in Yugoslavia, and um, I'm afraid it's not something that uh, artists usually do. So I thought maybe it's good to have an artist strike, even even as a, as a gesture uh, 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 that is actually done by me. I didn't um, inform the artists that we will be doing this, so I covered all the sculptures with, with a cloth and turned all the paintings uh, towards the wall for one day. Uh, the one that you see that piece there, that's mine. It's a, like a canvas on the, on, the, on the frame, but it has uh, two back sides. So whenever you turn it, it's always turned to the back side. So this is kind of universal work if you want to add something to the Art Strike exhibition. Uh, the, other, the other work that I did in uh, 77 has to do with the uh, idea of um, work, of uh, labor. You know, what is artist labor? How we artists work? You know, what, what is supposed to be our, our effort? You know, is it like a physical work or is it, uh, you know, a big gesture where it becomes uh, and where it starts at uh, what it becomes and how it ends? So I did this kind of a Zen point of, of uh, uh, artist work uh, as labor. Uh, it's called um, Artist at Work. This is this is the version. I, I have the version with one table. And this is the called Yesterday, Today, Tomorrow because it. Uh, I'll show you. It has this um, flow master hung by the lamp, working lamp. On the paper, and uh, the the, uh, the floor master leaves the stain as it stays, you know, touching the paper. The stain becomes slowly bigger and bigger. And in this case, you have the yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The, the tomorrow stain is very little, and the yesterday stain stain is a bigger one. So it's it's the kind of idea of an absent artist, uh, but still a working artist, because the work is being produced, and uh, even with no artist uh, being. Physically Physically present. So this was another way of, of um, um, uh, discussing the, the the role of the artist and, and um, uh, what is the projection of uh, uh, and ideas that people have about the artist um, at work. The other uh, this piece is done in uh, seventy eight. Uh, uh, talking about white cube, uh, it was mentioned several times today. Uh, this is the work I did uh, for the Pumps Gallery in Vancouver. I was asked to do a show. I, I offered them to uh, repaint the gallery in white, so that we can exhibit the nicely painted gallery. So, and this is me doing the painting, and uh, the exhibition was the the, the uh, painted gallery in white. Uh, the other, the other uh, uh, interest that we uh, 
uh, I was at the time living with Sanja Veković, so we um, shared certain certain ideas and and um, uh, look, were looking together for some. Uh, uh, ways of, of dealing with such ideas. Uh, one of the things were, you know, this idea of uh, how to uh, have something parallel to, uh, to the existing institutions. And um, it was the time um, of um, artist-run centers that we noticed in Canada and in the United States. So we decided to, uh, to start something in Zagreb. Uh, uh, this is the first. The first idea was to call it Our. Our is uh, uh, was a time that the shortening for something that you could uh, translate as a organization of associated labor. Let's say, is it okay? Okay. Uh, uh, it was it was the the kind of the the unit of the production unit uh, that the self-government uh, model of socialism was trying to develop uh, in Yugoslavia. So uh, every little factory was OUR, you know, and then you have the OUR that would be like the basic organization of associated labor. And the picture is uh, made uh, the, uh, following the similar photographies that are uh, coming out into the world press because it was 1978 when uh, Brigate Rosse uh, kidnapped uh, Aldo Moro, the former prime minister of Italy, and they photographed him with a daily newspaper so that you know that the photograph is, uh, you know, up to date. So this is the, the thing. The, the other, the other and final uh, title was the Podrum. It was the, my 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 studio at the time, and uh, we decided to open it for a, for a, a kind of self-governing art practice, and we started it in um, in this space. Uh, uh, you see the group of artists that are now all. Uh, um, most of them very known, uh, Mladen Stilinović, uh, Sanje Veković, uh, Željko Jerman, uh, uh, Vlado Martek and uh, Petr Col. So this was kind of the beginning of the uh, of the certain practice that, that was later uh, accepted and had a, had a continuation in the uh, space that that uh, continued this this uh, way of, of uh, organizing and showing the work of arts. <coughs> uh, this was the we started also the magazine like uh, the title was the Prvi Broj, which is the like the first issue. Uh, the, the idea was that every next um, issue would have the title, second issue, third issue. But I think it is stopped with the first issue. Uh, uh, the other uh, uh, subject that I think is interesting, and I think this is why I was invited here, is this um, a series of, of works that I call um, Data Recovery. Uh, because, uh, as I said, it uh, deals with the uh, issue of social uh, and sometimes personal memory and uh, 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 the loss of uh, that memory. The, it was mentioned before that um, Yugoslavia was uh, the, the, the kind of historical breakdown happened uh, territorially and ideologically, you know, the, the, uh, the, when Yugoslavia um, broke down, the, 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 uh, the idea of socialism also uh, broke down. So um, uh, this uh, transition produced the uh, great need to uh, revise the history, to forget things that didn't fit into the projection that the new ideology tried to uh, give to the people and uh, international context. So the forgetting process became really intensive and I, I thought I, you know, I would do something good if I, if I um, uh, try to uh, generate certain situations that uh, uh, were in some way lost. So, so I, I adopted the, the term that obviously comes from computer 
uh, context, data recovery, but I also, um, but I uh, took it because I, uh, I liked the, what, what was uh, done in the procedure of data recovery, especially in the earlier days of computer. Um, when you have the, the disk broke down, uh, uh, usually the data recovery would be uh, fragmentary. You couldn't uh, recover as you can today, basically uh, all the all the files and folders that you have on your computer. You would uh, um, often uh, recover the fragments of the, uh, the files. So, for example, you could recover pieces of text but they were spread out on the disk without uh, because the the uh, the important thing that uh, connect these pieces uh, was lost this was like the path to, to you know that every computer looks for when it locates a certain uh, content of a certain file so i thought that this is uh, this is the proper procedure i should do i don't want to reenact uh, past events i i thought i could generate uh, not the event, I could maybe generate the fragment of certain events, but these fragments I thought should be authentic. Uh, this is because you can you can produce authentic fragment, you cannot produce authentic event because it, it's in the past. So this is the procedure that I was uh, trying to follow in this in this particular works. Um, I also uh, thought that the the I don't want to sort of go into some kind of narrative. I was uh, mostly interested in configuration. Again, again, you know, you could, you could, uh, you could connect it to computers, and you know, meaning the, uh, I don't know, monitor, or disk, uh, um, external memory, mouse. These all things. Uh, uh, configure the, the, the informatic, uh, um, well, let's say, uh, hardware. And uh, for me, the configuration would be more like the actors of certain of certain event, uh, the uh, uh, the moment when it happens, uh, the uh, the location, and um, uh, these uh, things. Uh, one of the uh, things that uh, triggered uh, this this idea was the event that uh, links again to what uh, our colleagues were also talking about, the destruction of the monument. Um, uh, in uh, And I call this work JBT uh, 29th, uh, December 29th of uh, 2004, because at that day um, somebody placed the explosive on the... I can show you... The, on the uh, monument and the sculpture of uh, uh, Tito in, in the his in the village where he was born near Zagreb, and uh, the you can see that the sculpture fell down from the from the postament, and the head was of the sculpture was in the grass. So I, uh, you know, it was it was a shocking thing because um, uh, this was firstly very close to Zagreb. And uh, it was um, probably the first monument that was really Tito's figure. So it, it, it is a sculpture by Anton Agustincic, the, the Croatian sculptor. Uh, and uh, the, there were several copies of this sculpture made and, and they were placed in different places in Yugoslavia. So I, I thought I should go there and see you know, what is there to see. And I realized that the, there was only the postament. They took the sculpture immediately to restore the thing, and the whole idea was to uh, um, redo the whole thing as soon as possible and forget that it ever happened. So I thought, uh, you know, someone should re re remember this this event of uh, destruction of the monument, and I went there and I took the place of the of the on the empty pedestal because I realized that. When there is nothing there, people don't realize that something was there. So when I was standing there, this was uh, kind of pointing to the missing uh, sculpture. Uh, later on, I did. I did. Um, uh, when I was there, I bought the. Um, you could at that time. I'm not sure if this is possible anymore. You could buy a smaller replica, a bronze replica of of uh, this uh, Tito sculpture, and um, to re. Uh, 
to redo this uh, decapitation of, of, the, of the Tito's figure that happened symbolically with the explosive. I did it as a performance. I cut off the head of this uh, little, little uh, sculpture showing Tito so that I could do what I call the monument to destruction of the monument. Uh, and this is, I'll show you here, you see how it is, this is the same bronze uh, thing, but the fallen sculpture and the head is uh, uh, um, uh, what, what was uh, there the day when the, the explosion happened. So this is pointing to how the monument looked when it was uh, destroyed. Um, the other, the other uh, piece that is uh, uh, linked to um, uh, Tito is the, the piece uh, that I called uh, JBT Zadar uh, 51. JBT is for Josip Broz Tito. Um, uh, I will show you now, uh, this is the photo because it's uh, better quality, but actually I did, uh, I did um, it was uh, like a public uh, performance um, done with a projection. I, I recorded uh, myself reading uh, Tito's speech that he held in the city of Zadar, which is the city on the coast, uh, Adriatic coast in Croatia, that he did in 1951. So I uh, uh, arranged the projection, public projection on the square, but as I didn't have any, any permit to do this, and uh, Zadar is known to be a very right-wing city. I, I realized that in order to do this, I have to kind of hide the, at least the, the content of the speech. So I reversed the, the recording, and it was played backwards. Uh, this is symbolic in, uh, in a way, uh, uh, trying to deal with you know with a difficult subject in in the wrong place. Uh, so I did it, uh, I did it, uh, I'll show you how it works. Uh, uh, what I did uh, uh, afterwards with the video, I uh, reversed it uh, again. So you will see what happens uh, 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 when you can't understand the, my speech and the city <laughs> life is normal and what happens in the other, in the other uh, situation. So you see, uh, the, the only uh, the, the result of this impossibility to show the video on the public space uh, the way it should be shown uh, produced this very interesting uh, uh, combination of uh, moving forward and backwards. You know how these two realities are sort of, you know, going uh, going in different directions. Uh, the other piece that I did uh, and that uh, uh, connects with the first uh, video that I was mentioning that I did in that school. 
uh, uh, was something that I did in, in 2009. Um, I realized uh, that uh, when I was filming this uh, um, television set in, back in 1974, that I actually recorded the whole TV news of that day. So I uh, start, uh, started to research to find out which exact day was this uh, 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 day of the TV news and I found that this was uh, uh, um, April 9th, uh, 1974. Actually uh, I asked uh, somebody in television because at the end of the news there was the, the, the one of the uh, news was the, in the sports section was that um, one Yugoslav athlete won a, uh, uh, a golden medal on the European uh, uh, Athletic uh, Championship and of course they could find the date so I, 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 I realized this was uh, um, uh, April 9th. Uh, what I did, I, then I decided to redo the news. Uh, I, I took the, the role of the newscaster and I um, uh, did this TV news again. Um, and you will see in the, in the kind of like a small picture that you see behind me is, uh, is the original video uh, recording of 1974 so that the, so you could sort of check that I'm not you know inventing the news. I d uh, did the transcription and then I read the news of the of the day. The, I'll show just a little bit because it's in Croatian. Uh, the thing is that um, you realize how the the context when the context radically changed, uh, how how the language and the ideas and uh, and the terms that were used in in the news in the seventy four became uh, um, almost on the on the level of um, being not uh, understood at all. It's it's completely different. It's you know talking about the uh, Yugoslav army about how Tito published uh, the, somebody published his uh, his uh, uh, collection of uh, speeches. Uh, the, you know the whole the the, the members of uh, party did this and that and and the international some of the international news actually are uh, um, uh, still actual like cyber crisis that started at, at, at around these days. So I'll just show you to give you the idea the the way I, I tried to do it was uh, um, to, to put it in a kind of a visual context of today so that the, the, the look of the news is more like today news and the subject and the content of the news is uh, you know from back uh, 74. Dobar večer. Počinje dnevnik. It was shown uh, a piece of it was shown on Croatian television in 2009. Evo pregleda današnjih vijesti. U upravo objavljenom komunikeu o godišnjem sastanku ministara vanjskih poslova održanom u glavnom gradu Islanda Reykjaviku, vlade pet nordijskih zemalja smatraju da se trajno i pravedno rješenje ciparske krize može postići poštivanjem suvereniteta, nezavisnosti i teritorijalnog integriteta otoka. Portugalski ministar vanjskih poslova Mario Suarez odputovao je u Lusaku gdje sutra počinju razgovori s predstavnicima oslobodilačkog pokreta Mozambika o priznavanju nezavisnosti ove afričke zemlje. Ministar trgovine u sovjetskoj vladi Struev i predsjednik izvršnog vijeća sabora Hrvatske dr. Jakov Sirotković svečano su otvorili danas u Moskvi prodavonicu jugoslavenske robe Jadran koju je opremilo splitsko poduzeće Kotex zajedno sa robnom kućom Moskva. Velika, suvremeno uređena trgovina otvorena je u jednom od novo izgrađenih stambenih naselja sovjetskog glavnog rada. Dr. Sirotković je izrazio uvjerenje da stalan i brz razvoj jugoslavensko-sovjetskih odnosa pruža dobru osnovu za povećanje robne razmjene robe široke potrošnje. So this was the, the, the way of uh, uh, generating the news program of, of uh, uh, 1974. Uh, for me this was um, also um, kind of personal um, 
trip back to my first, uh, very first video that uh, was so minimal and almost almost um, nothing, you know. Um, but then, you know, you, in a new context of a new work, it it could be read as, as something um, more important, I guess. Um, and I um, did actually. Um, uh, uh, several times this uh, particular uh, switch between the, the older work and the new works uh, and that through this process I discovered that kind of um, a linear reading of artistic um, uh, uh, works are actually not a, a good idea uh, because the, you can never know how um, one work can uh, be linked to something that happened much, much later, or, or vice versa. Uh, I did, I did, um, um, as I said, an, quite a number of, of uh, such works. Uh, I have a, a kind of a, a sub-series of works um, that. Uh, uh, are in this uh, data recovery group, and they, uh, this uh, project relates to, and it was uh, initiated by, by again by um, events that happened uh, in 2000 and uh, uh, I don't know, I'm sure about 2006, I think. Uh, um, uh, when in Paris and, and uh, in France, uh, the, the kind of the uh, immigrant population started to demonstrate against the, 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 the rules of, of the French society that excluded them from, from uh, this society. And uh, this um, rebellion was uh, uh, always uh, uh, co communicated by b burning the car. So the, uh, I got interested because you know this is such a such a, a, a kind of a narrowed um, a, a type of action, but is understood uh, as a universal. It's always been understood in the right way, and everybody, when uh, when uh, one sees the burning car, you realize that something is really really wrong. So I started in 2007. I started to burn cars. And I will show just a piece uh, how it looks, uh, and will tell you a little bit about it. Um, uh, I did the, the last uh, car burning I did um, in Dubrovnik, uh, beginning of this year. Um, um, the I, I always, uh, when I'm doing this, I always uh, want to find first the location that could um, uh, be proper for such a, an act. I was sometimes asked to do to burn a car in front of the museum, for example, which I never accepted. I I'd always thought that the car should be burned where the car are, are burned. So in Dubrovnik also I didn't go into the historic, you know, uh, uh, beautiful part. Uh, this is uh, called uh, Mokoshica. It's a, it's a part of Dubrovnik which is a bit problematic. You have these huge uh, 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 concrete buildings with um, kind of working class people um, uh, uh, living there. So we decided to, to do it there in, in order to um, sort of link the, the, the potential problems of, the, of this uh, part of the city with, uh, with uh, such a, a radical uh, you know, showing of, of, uh, uh, of these problems. And I, I must say I got the I got the, uh, um, uh, cheering from from a local uh, uh, football football ch uh, 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 group that would identify easily with such a, such an action. Uh, anyways, I'm I'm doing this um, whether you know it or you don't. Um, we go around and do this. Uh, um, Another, another um, uh, piece that I did that um, uh, 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 is trying to gen generate uh, one event that, uh, at the time uh, of the original um, uh, happening, um, had a huge uh, uh, media coverage uh, uh, worldwide. It was it was the. Uh, 
it happened in, in 1966 when supposedly you know Chinese communist leader Mao Zedong swam uh, across the uh, Yangtze River. This was a, a big, big uh, revolutionary act of an old uh, revolutionary to show uh, how the revolution is still in, in uh, shape and probably to show that he is also in, in, in good shape. He was already very old. So I thought, um, you know, I understood this like how you, you can uh, uh, generate uh, an, an ideological or political uh, message by uh, uh, using uh, the nature, how you can change the, the society by using by you know using the nature of the river and I thought maybe I could uh, reverse the process I can uh, um, use the political event that already happened in order to change the nature for a moment so I decided I will swim across the river Sava which is much much smaller than Yangtze river Sava is in, in uh, you know flowing in Zagreb so I did this um, I'll show you a piece of it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I uh, swam across uh, the river uh, and I put two cameras. One was on my head and the other was on my hand. And I, on my head I also had uh, the uh, audio playing that could, uh, so I could listen to the revolutionary Chinese music that, that would sort of you know, encourage me to do this because, you know, I, I should have done this much earlier. This is me doing what Mao Zedong was doing in his old age, you know, trying to prove that he is still there. Uh, I'll show you a little bit. It was shown uh, as part of the Saberzi Film Festival that happens in Zagreb every year. And this was done in uh, 2009. The sound is from the film, the original documentation of Mao Zedong swimming in Chinese. Just go. 
Gott will es. Uh, the other work that uh, sort of links to the, the idea and context uh, of the museum is uh, the work that I uh, started in 2009. Uh, it's called the Museum of Which Working Class. And it is sort of kind of a view uh, to the museum uh, from the view of the people that work in the museum. Uh, the, I started the project and the project uh, uh, has a certain procedure. Um, you see there uh, that is the blown up uh, leaflet, the yellow thing, that has uh, uh, five stages, like if you have five red stars, um, uh, and four, three, two, or one, and each each uh, level um, is is defined by uh, the working conditions, the the salary, the relationship of the uh, management or the workers, and uh, then uh, be organized like a voting. Uh, the, all the people employed in the museum get the this uh, little uh, leaflet, and they can decide, you know, which. Uh, uh, you know how many stars they want to uh, give to the museum, and uh, you see there is the photos of all the people that uh, voted. Um, this is the Ludwig Museum, but I did it in different uh, different museums, uh, and um, uh, the idea comes from uh, from. Uh, uh, something that uh, was very uh, usual in the in the socialist era, um, but it was kind of the opposite in in, in the factories or companies uh, of uh, uh, um, 60s, for example. Uh, uh, the the management would choose the work the worker of the month, for example, and then his photo would be on the wall, the best worker of the month. Uh, um, so I thought, well, I will reuse this um, concept, but uh, reverse it in a way that the workers put the, the museum, uh, the museum um, uh, in front. The, uh, also, I, I, I thought it, it's kind of interesting because the museum is always judged by the exhibitions, you know, by the work that is shown, and then you can say, well, this is a very good, good museum, and this is not so good museum. The show was not so good. But nobody ever asks the people there what they think. Is it a good museum or is it not such a good museum? So, um, for example, the voting um, the voting goes like this. You know, the people would put the ballots in, in, the, in the box. Then we read the, the took all the take all the leaflets and see see how the museum uh, uh, rates. And for example, the Ludwig Museum got the middle working class uh, rating, uh, only three red stars. The, I remember the director was really really kind of sad because he said, well, because it's not our problem, it's the government is not giving up, giving us enough money. We, you know, it's like. I said, well, you know, I'm not. This is not judging you. It's just the people, you know. They, um, anyway, I think he was removed from the museum uh, in the process. Um, <laughs> Hungarian right wing revolution. Uh, so um, this is yeah. I, I will I will do this in Belgrade actually in, in a, for the show that is uh, that is. Um, uh, uh, the second edition of the show that was in, in uh, Ljubljana, Inside Out, I think was the title of it. And the museum is also kind of the subject. So it, it always, in, um, in each, in each um, uh, situation, it, it develops a bit differently. In Zagreb, I had, I had people not willing to participate because it was a communist red star. They didn't want to do anything with this anymore. And uh, uh, in some other places, like in, in Budapest, everybody wanted to be there. And I had to come twice because some people who were not able to be, you know, were not present, but wanted to participate, asked me if I, you know, if I could come back so that they can take the part. So it goes, uh, you know, in, in any possible direction. Uh, and then I'll show you uh, just another work because I'm pushed to end my presentation. 
uh, or two maybe, yeah. This is the, the a work that is called uh, Social Reading. It's uh, uh, maybe uh, in the best way sh shows without uh, explanation this, uh, this uh, transitional uh, 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 state of, of uh, Croatia. Uh, or it could be applied to Yugoslavia too. Um, so on, on the left side, it's the same newspaper, it's uh, the evening uh, paper of, of, uh, published in Zagreb. The left page is uh, the, from 1980, uh, when uh, Tito died. So they uh, published a special issue, uh, you know, with all the, you know, um, um, texts um, um, about uh, how great President Tito was and, you know, how the socialism after Tito is still going to happen and things like that. And then in uh, 1999, uh, another Croatian, now Croatian president died, uh, Franjo Tuđman who um, brought this very anti-communist, anti-socialist ideas of a kind of ultra-nationalist um, um, ideology. But when he died, the same newspaper uh, issued the same type of special edition with this, practically the same texts, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, crying uh, after after President Tujman. So I did this. This is a series of uh, photographs uh, of me reading the this uh, paper, but uh, with the pages uh, mixed. So you know, it's like you reading the paper. Left side is from 1918. Uh, right side is from 1999, or the opposite. There are like six six uh, possible combination. And the last um, piece. This is something that I'm not going to say. I think this is uh, uh, again the, the uh, idea of uh, you know how how to deal with the destruction of the monument. This is something that happened in uh, I think 2009 in um, um, uh, St. Petersburg. Somebody uh, put the explosive on the, uh, the statue of Lenin, uh, which is in front of the Finlandia station in St. Petersburg. That's the station where train station um, uh, to which uh, uh, Lenin came back uh, from Switzerland to start the revolution. So it has this kind of historic importance. And somebody put the explosive, and the explosive made this funny kind of hole in his coat. So I, I, I did the. I again wanted to uh, co uh, uh, do something that would keep this uh, particular event, um, uh, you know, f f forever, uh, if not forever, for a long time. So I did the, the blasted Lenin coat. This is called um, because it, I, I made the coat out of the, uh, you know, the textile, uh, but in the size of the of the Lenin sculptor. So it's about almost three meters um, uh, high. And uh, I'll just show you how, how we did the how we did the hole.
Okay, so maybe the blast is the good way to finish the. Thank you.